there, and the tag team titles will be defended this week in our main event. I'm Matt Topolsky alongside Brad Gilmore for the reality of wrestling, and this week on the road, Brad, we're going to see Hawks Aries put those titles up for grabs for the first time since defeating Team Fly Def against Mysterious Q and Tempo. What a team that is. I mean, it's the first time they're ever going to team together, and they're having a shot at the Reality Wrestling Tag Team Championships. We've seen Q and tag action here recently at the Reality of Wrestling, tagging with the Green Machine, Mike Orlando. Now another new partner for the Mysterious Q. How will he and Tempo mesh, and can they grab the brass ring, for lack of a better expression, and become champions in their first night? That would make Q a Grand Slam champion. It would indeed, and we're going to find out if that will happen later on here this week in our main event. But coming up next to start off the action, Diego De La Cruz has been pacing the locker room. He has been pissed off. He has been mad as hell since being excluded from the Summer of Champions card. And he is declaring right here tonight he's going to make a statement in this tournament matchup against Eric Lockhart, who has signed a new deal with Reality of Wrestling and has once again become a full-time member of the roster, Brad. Hey, absolutely. And here's the thing about Eric Lockhart. Since he's come back, he's had some steam behind him. He had a great showing in that fatal four-way match at the Summer of Champions, but wasn't able to pull it off. You know that he's coming in here way more motivated to become one of the first men to get to the next round of this tournament and to become wrestling royalty. Well, the road to wrestling royalty continues right now. Eric Lockhart and Diego De La Cruz are next. takes on Eric Lockhart in this tournament matchup. And his opponent from New Richmond, Wisconsin, weighing in at 202 pounds, Eric Lockhart. Eric Lockhart had some exciting news this week that he had signed a new deal with Reality of Wrestling, returning full time for the reality of wrestling roster. A former tag team champion here at the row. An athlete who started amateur wrestling at seven years old. We know all about what Eric Lockhart brings to the table, but what a statement he would make to the row nation if he returned to the row full time and won this tournament. And Brad Gilmore, he has to be on the short list of athletes capable of doing it. Well, he's definitely one of the most well-conditioned athletes I think I've ever seen here at Reality of Wrestling. This is the guy, he can go all night, man. And that's what you're gonna have to be able to do. Oh, wait a minute, though. Diego De La Cruz bum-rushing him. We talked about earlier, Diego De La Cruz, none too happy about being excluded from action at Summer of Champions, and he's jumping all over Eric Lockhart early. Well, here's the interesting thing, though, Matt Topolsky, that we, we have failed to mention as of yet for this tournament. Every member of La Familia is in this tournament. Now we've also we've already seen Max Umberto has been eliminated by Zach Mason, but still on one side of the bracket, you have Diego De La Cruz and Aiden Cristiano. They could potentially meet each other in the semifinals of this tournament. I mean, what would that do to La well, Familia? That's what they say. They often say, you know, blood is thicker than water, but is it really when you have money on the line, when you have opportunities on the line? Diego De La Cruz, as I said, he's been in the background for a while here. He hasn't really been a part of the major spotlight 
that Aiden Cristiano doesn't like to share. Perhaps this is the opportunity for him to finally say, you know what, it's my time. But he's got to get through Eric Lockhart first. And now Eric Lockhart seems to be recovering after that. Oh! Jump attack from Diego De La Cruz. Oh, look at that. Cover here. Kick out at one and a half. Taking a siesta. Oh wow, and driving those knees into the middle and the low back of Diego de la Cruz. You know, it's like I mentioned at the beginning of this matchup, Eric Lockhart has been amateur wrestling since the age of seven. Stretching that mid and lower back, and look at that. Trying to get into a full surfboard. That side headlock, Eric Lockhart really been. Oh, look at that. Get him down to the mat. Eric Lockhart been dominating here, Matt Topolsky. I mean, you would think after that jump attack from Diego de la Cruz, momentum would be the other way, but Eric Lockhart has had consistent, consistent control here. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, I think it's because Diego de la Cruz has come into this matchup with this mindset that. Well, I don't know exactly what his mindset is. All I can do is, is speculate, and that is that he's upset about being excluded from Summer of Champions. He's tired of being overlooked. Meanwhile, Eric Lockhart's coming here with a game plan and without emotion, kick out at two. Now, Diego De La Cruz voicing his displeasure with the referee's speed of his count. We often, see this, see, that. We often see this in athletic competitions, whether it be a professional football game, whether it be boxing match, an MMA fight, professional wrestling. You have somebody that comes in and they have a lot of momentum early, but then that adrenaline starts to wear off. And we're going to have to see if Diego De La Cruz can capture that adrenaline, bottle it, harness it. Oh, wow. Throughout the course of this matchup. Right now, it's looking good. Well, right now, he's got back in control of this contest, which I'm impressed by Diego De La Cruz. He's been an athlete, too. Oh, only a one count. Diego De La Cruz has been an athlete here at Reality Wrestling. I think Matt Topolsky gets overlooked a little bit. I mean, when you're a member of a group, sometimes people are looking at the leader, and they're not, they're not looking at Joey Fatone or Lance Bass, if you know what I mean, Matt Topolsky. So I think Diego De La Cruz is also looking at this tournament as a coming out party. Yes. Springboard jumping kick right there from De La Cruz. Double underhook here. Oh, oh, oh my, my goodness! Throat first across the knee, an innovative maneuver that will send him to the second round of this tournament. No, Eric Lockhart escapes like a cat burglar at the last moment. Diego De La Cruz looking to make it into that elite eight. 16 men in this tournament, or in this round rather. We already know Gino and Zach Mason have advanced. I saw that last episode. Oh! Lockhart, vintage here. Oh, there he goes. He tosses Diego De La Cruz across the ring. With that snap suplex. Perhaps some of that adrenaline starting to wear out here for De La Cruz. And now Lockhart. Oh, drop. Here we go, cover. One, two, three.
some vintage Eric Lockhart, and he punches his ticket to the round of eight. We will see him live on October the 12th at the Rise to Wrestling Royalty. Brad Gilmore, it looks like we may be hearing from Eric Lockhart right now. Let's see what he's got to say, Matt Zapolsky. Big win. Eric, congratulations on your win tonight, and congratulations to your return to reality of wrestling. Finally, the Lockhart chance can be heard throughout the World Dream Arena. Yes, thank you. I'm not focused on tonight. I'm focused on the quarterfinals now. And yeah, they've been chanting the Lockhart name. They keep chanting it. They've been chanting it all day. All I'm here to do is make sure that you and everyone else know who the real Lockhart is. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be freaking kidding me. I know. I told him how important this was. You did. You were there when I told him how important this was. I was there. He dropped the ball just like Max. Now we're down two. Now it's up to you next week to make that up. <laughs> hmm. Look, okay, let me explain something. Just stop what? right there. I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna hear it. I saw what happened. You let us down. And it's up to you to pick it up. Next week, you have one half of fly death, and I don't have to tell you how important this is. No. I don't have to remind you how important this is. And I don't have to remind you that you do not let down the familia. I didn't no. let down the familia. Look, what Just happened? Just stop what? right now. We're going to talk about it later. Clean yourself up. Go clean yourself up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ashley Bull, backstage here with Cameron Cole. Now, Cameron, next week you have been granted a match to face Will Alday for his television championship. How are you preparing for that match? Ashley, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You see, Booker, you made a big mistake a couple of weeks ago. You just threw me to the wolves against that monster Edge Stone, but it's all right, because I forgive you, and you understand me. That's why you have granted me a television championship match next week. Let's talk about my opponent, Ashley, Will Alday. You see, me and Will, we're really close friends, good buddies. We traveled this entire summer together, perfecting our crafts. Just something, something isn't right. Something's changed with you, Will. I just can't get it through your head what I'm trying to tell you, because I was just like you. Main event, television champion, stealing the show every night. Ashley, where did that get me? You're right, nowhere. And I told him that over and over. You're doing all this for nothing. And he just doesn't understand. What do I do, Ashley? You know what I do? I take what's most important to him. I take the television championship. You know why? because I have to prove a point. Sometimes you just have to prove a point. Well, momentarily here, we will be joined by the president, the CEO, the boss man himself, the two-time, two-time WWE Hall of Famer, Booker T. As the road to wrestling royalty Rolls on. There's the boss man. And there he is, Matt Topolsky. Wonder what the boss has to what say tonight. Know? I guess we're gonna find out. I know I look tired. <laughs> I've been all over the world, man. But I was not gonna miss tonight. This is reality of wrestling, guys. And tonight is the start of the qualifiers of the road to wrestling royalty.
guys, the tournament starts in just a few minutes. And I want everybody to enjoy themselves. Get ready for a thrill ride that you will not forget, guys, because those guys in the back, they're ready. But before we do that, guys, before we do that, we want to talk about the main event for next month's Road to Wrestling Royalty. You want to hear it? Before we talk about who's going to be in the main event, let's bring out the champ right now. Well, Matt Tapolsky, some big news about to be broken. We see Ryan Davison, ruthless Ryan Davison, the bear, coming out. And we're going to, I guess, find out whose opponent is at the Road to Wrestling World. Ryan Davidson, a successful title defense at Summer of Champions 6. Defending that title against NXT's Dio Madden. And certainly proving to everyone in Orlando who the final boss truly is. Whether you love him or you hate him, and opinions vary, you have to respect what the first Grand Slam champion in row history has accomplished and what he continues to do, and that's carry that goal undisputed. Well, let's not forget Matt Tapolsky. Last time, these two men were standing in the same ring. It didn't really go in Ryan Davidson's favor. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your champion, Ruthless Ryan Davidson. See, I just wanted to personally bring Ryan out here so I could talk to him face to face. See, last month it was an awesome, awesome match between Ryan Davison and Dio Madden. You know, you, oh yeah, that match was a disqualification, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is still the champ. But in reality of wrestling, it's all about being a fighting champion. That's why I want to introduce you to your opponent for next month's main event, Road to Wrestling Royalty, somebody that you are very familiar with, someone that you have went one-on-one -on -one in the middle of this ring with, someone had, that has stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, Ryan Davidson, and I want to introduce you right now to your opponent. Let's bring him out right now. The fastest kicks in the South, Brian King. of wrestling championship right here at the road to wrestling royalty. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your main event next month. Well, a big money fight already signed for the rise to wrestling royalty. Only one place to catch it. And that's on Reality of Wrestling's YouTube channel exclusively October the 12th. Find out more info right now at realityofwrestling.com as Ruthless Ryan Davidson defends against Ryan Pete. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your main event. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Nancy Perez, and I'm here backstage with Flight F. 
Now, Zach, congratulations on moving on to this next part of the tournament. How are you feeling right now? Well, thank you, Nancy. As far as how I'm feeling right now, I'm feeling great. I'm on top of the world, baby. I qualified for the tournament. I beat Max Umberto, and now I'm moving on up. I'm like the Jeffersons, baby, and I'm finally finna get a piece of that pie. <laughs> now, Warren, you do know if you win your qualifying match, Flydef might be going against each other in this tournament. What? what? Against each other? Flydef? Oh, oh my God, God no! no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, Nancy, come on. I mean, we knew what we signed up for. We knew exactly what we were getting ourselves into. I'm pretty confident about my match next week. And if we have to face each other, then so be it. I mean, we'll go out there, have a respectable contest, and may the best Fly Brother win. And when I do, it's going to be drinks on me at the bar. Man, don't worry. I got you, brother, man. You my man. You... <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Spankway! Spankway! What we got over here? Some cleaning duties, huh? Oh, I remember you. I fired you. Look at you back up on your feet, cleaning. You want something to clean? Go <laughs> clean that up, baby! What's your name, huh? Uh, it doesn't matter. Let me tell you who I am. I'm Brendan frickin' Steen. The man around here, you understand? Best look in 2019. Made Connor Holliman retire. I want a frickin' ladder match. Give me that. You don't deserve this broom. They tell me there's a road, a tournament. Well, guess who's going to win the whole damn thing? I am! And they say, who is it, Clay? Clay Roberts? I already beat his ass. There's nobody that's going to stop me. Nobody. Give me more awards. Give me everything. Titles, champs, to glory. Bring back the dead. Bring back the dead. Introducing first, representing Legion, it's Isaiah. Well, Isaiah, in some ways, is a man without a country, or more, to be more specific, a man without a legion. I gotta think that Booker T made this opening round match on purpose. Isaiah against Tommy Bolton. Love starting to get the uh, the feeling that perhaps Isaiah should change his name to Legion. Well, he is Legion and he is men. And his opponent from Houston, Texas, weighing in at 220 pounds, Tommy. Bolton! Tommy the Brute Bolton. Finally broke the trance, Matt Bolton. Yeah, as, as you say, he was on a milk cart for the better part of two years. Well, absolutely, and you know, he's trying to establish an identity for himself, and that Brute nickname is something that has caught on at the training facility and in the locker room, known for one of the strongest jaws of anybody on the roster, and we have seen it from Tommy. He has been able to take punishment, take some serious shots. But I don't think Isaiah is going to be able to make that elevator pitch for Legion to Tommy anymore. Isaiah saying you're weak without Legion, pleading to the former January, trying to get him, I don't know if he's trying to play mind games and maybe get January, or excuse me, Tommy the Brute Bolton to lay down for him, but it doesn't look like it's working. No, Tommy's not laying down for anybody anymore. That's not gonna happen. Like I said, he's not gonna buy into this sales pitch. Whatever speech that Isaiah has left, it's like I said before, you, you know, we, we've covered Legion for years now. Hell, Brad, we've covered him for five years. Uh, they, they, they look more vulnerable than they ever have. Yeah, frankly. I think that several times we thought we were going to see the end of Legion. And somehow, when you, know, when you cut one head off, two grow in its place. But this time, Isaiah standing solo dolo, as the great Kid Cudi once said.
must mean for Tommy to finally get his identity back, to go by the name that he chooses to go by. Tommy Bolton! No longer January. Saw that shot right there from Isaiah. Drops Tommy across the knee. Cover here too. This matchup again, as I pointed out, more than just a personal affair between these two. This is a tournament matchup, a preliminary tournament match. The rise to wrestling royalty. The winner of this matchup will be heading to that October 12th live event. As you can see on YouTube, exclusively on Reality of Wrestling's YouTube, right here from the World Gym Arena. You know, as Tommy continues to create this identity for himself in front of the Roe Nation, he's got to be desperate to get in that round of eight. And at that point, who knows, anything can happen. Follows up with a backbreaker. Tommy just slips out there, slithers under the door to stay in this matchup. We've already seen Zach Mason, Gino, Eric Lockhart all advance to the next round of this tournament. And also, who could forget, we just saw that big announcement from Booker T. Next month, October the 12th, Rise to Wrestling Royalty, your main event. Hold on. Roll up. Standing coup de gras right there from Isaiah. Your main event's going to be Ryan Davidson versus the bounty hunter Brian Keith for their Reality Wrestling Championship. And the winner of this match will face the winner of Abel Andrew Jackson and Edge Stone, which takes place next week. To get to that quarterfinal round, man. Isaiah trying to tell January, excuse me, trying to tell Tommy Bolton that he still is January. Don't you he get still caught goes, up in it. He still goes, he still is controlled by him. Well, I mean, if January is available, you're more than welcome to join Legion if you'd like. I mean, it would be a good Twitter handle. You know what I mean? At January? At January. First month of the year, you know what I mean? It's a tougher month to spell than people give it. Oh, or high cross body off the top there. I think it's Feb, Feb Brewery really gives me a pop. Yeah, that's sort of the Mississippi of months. Yeah, it definitely is. Wrap up to a count of four. Now here's the thing, if both men get counted out, whoever wins the match between Double AJ and Ed Stone would get a bye into the semifinals. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. That's why I love tournaments, Matt. So many things can go wrong. So many things can happen. I do know that if anyone is injured during this tournament, Booker T says he has alternates on hand. But you, that's the thing. If both men get counted out, they're both out of the tournament. Oh, look at that. Isaiah landed right on his forehead. Big Larry right there. Two. Oh, whoa. Tommy almost finished it off. Two and three quarters. You're right, Brad Gilmore. Isaiah dropped right on the top of his head. It doesn't look like he's fully recovered from that one yet. Still reeling a bit. It's kind of hard to tell because, you know, he doesn't really have pupils. just drops Tommy across that middle rope. And Isaiah surveying his work, very proud of it here. Impressive. What a power bomb. bomb. One, two. two. Whoa, man. Referee. Got some pep in his step tonight, Matt to Get a little quick on the count. Still see a recovery. I think he wants to get the hell out of there before Isaiah looks him in the eyes. I think you're probably right about that one. You know, I don't blame him. I'd want to get out of there too in a hurry. Was Tommy the brute Bolton 
trying to put his demons behind him, both literally and metaphorically speaking. Isaiah. Oh, my Lord. Cartwheel Death Valley driver. Very impressive. Landing on his feet. Oh, and that big flying knee. It's got to be on. to be at one, two, three. Isaiah advances. Here is your winner, Isaiah. Well, Tommy will have to go back to the drawing board after this one. He has yet to exercise the demons of Legion. And Isaiah will be bringing those demons to this tournament on October the 12th. going on. I'm Ashley Bull, backstage here with the Renaissance woman herself, Hyon. Now, Hyon, I do want to address something. Last week with the Diamonds match, you, you interfered. What was the purpose of that? I've missed you, Ashley. We've done this. We haven't done this in a while. You know, it's, it's nice. It's really nice. Um, that Diamonds match. Do you know how long it's been since I've been back from Japan? It's been a while. It's been a it's been a hot minute, you know. And how many singles matches has I have I had since being back? Zero. Zero. Honestly, I'm offended. I'm I'm really upset about that. Booker, Charmel, the Row Nation, the Diamonds Division completely forgot that I exist. They forget that I am the number one diamond. And just because I don't have the Diamonds Division Championship around my waist doesn't make that not true, okay? I know Pink Dream, Alex Gracia, I've heard a lot of good things about her. She's been doing a lot since I've been gone. But let me remind you, it's only because I've been gone. So I'm here to retake my place as the number one diamond. I'm coming for that title in that match, look. <laughs> Jenna Lynn, Rachel Rose, look, guys, I'm sorry. It wasn't personal. It's, it's never personal, okay? I'm just here to take my spot again. And that's all it is. And this is nice. I've missed you. Welcome back to the Reality of Wrestling. Brad Gilmore alongside Matt Topolsky for The Row. And we want to remind everybody at home, we're just a few weeks away from the Rise to Wrestling royalty. It will be broadcast live on YouTube. And you can go to realityofwrestling.com right now to find out more details on that. And by the way, Brad, it will be free 99. Free 99 on the Reality of Wrestling YouTube page. It's a one-night tournament, Matt Topolsky. So qualifying matches, the first-round matches we've seen going down. And the winner, the man who's going to win that Rise Rise to Wrestling Royalty Tournament next month has to go three times in one night. He's got to get three wins in one night. It's going to be a battle of attrition for whoever wins that crown. Absolutely. It's been a long time since we've seen that in professional wrestling, and you can only see it right here at the Reality of Wrestling. But up next, the Tag Team Championships are up for grabs. Hawks, Aries, in their first defense, go up against Mysterious Q, one of the most decorated champions in the history of reality of wrestling, and Terrell Tempo, one of the best athletes we've ever seen step inside that ring. This is a big-time title defense. Do you think Hawks, Aries, the first-ever father-son tag team in row history, are up for the challenge? Well, I, I think that they are up for the challenge, but here's the thing about Mysterious Q and Terrell Tempo. These guys are more uh, familiar with themselves as opponents. We've seen them go against each other a few times here at Reality Wrestling. Now they have to team together, and they have the opportunity to grab the brass ring, win the championship, 
championships from a father and son tag team. If Mysterious Q and Terrell Temple can work together, I don't know who can stop them, Matt Topolsky. They've had both decorated singles careers here at the row. So my money right now, you know, hesitantly, is on Q and Terrell Temple. Well, there you have it, the tag team championships. Hang in the balance. It's our main event, and it's next. The following tag team matches is for one ball and Get along. And their opponent at a combined weight of 380 pounds from New Orleans, Louisiana. They are the reality of wrestling tag team champions, Luke and DJ Hawk. Hawk, Harry. The first father and son tag team in reality of wrestling history. At Summer of Champion 6, they defeated the former two time tag team champions. that young P.J. Hawks, Luke Hawks, obviously a veteran in this business for quite some time. I'm trying to remember. I mean, I don't think there's ever been a father-son tag team in the history of wrestling. I, I mean, I'm not sure about that, but I can only think of a few teams in general. You think about The Rock and Rocky Johnson. You think about Vern and Greg Gagne. You think about Dusty Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes. Uh, I, I, I don't know who else, but I don't know if they ever won tag gold. I'm trying to say it's a rare occurrence. Time here at the Reality of Wrestling. The champs sporting some new bright gear tonight as they go toe to toe with Team Green, Terrell Tempo, and the Mysterious Q. think though Matt that Hawks Aries definitely has the advantage in this match not only because they're the defending tag team champions but because they've actually teamed together before and then add that layer of one of them raise the other one and they have a familial bond where you can almost speak to one another without saying any words they have to have the clear advantage here tonight I have to agree with you 100 percent and this again is the first time pin attempt here for PJ See that's amateur wrestling here. For Look at PJ. that. Roll through once again. Beautiful cradle. This is going to get frustrating for Terrell Tempo pretty quickly here. But um, to expand on your point, Brad Gilmore, it's the first time that Terrell Tempo and the Mysterious Q, to my knowledge, are tagging together here at the Reality of Wrestling. I don't know how much they've done in terms of film study together working together, preparing for this matchup. I mean, this is more than just your typical exhibition. 
The reality of wrestling tag team titles, which sit in front of us right now, hanging the balance. And, and look at look at Luke Hawks though. Luke Hawks is sitting there on the apron, like a, almost a coach on the sidelines, trying to coach his son. And here he comes, the big hoss himself, the Southern Stomper, fresh off a plane from Mexico where he competed at CMLL's biggest event, their Grand Prix. Oh! And now he and Mysterious Q. It's the interesting thing about that too, Brad, is that, you know, in the rare occasion when you would see a player coach in any sport for that matter, typically they're in the twilight of their career. Luke Hawks doesn't exactly look like he's in the twilight of his. <laughs> he definitely does not. This is a busy man who's always flying around the country. And now he's taking him, his son with him. Keeping in the game, oh! And a Southern stomp to the Southern Stomper. That's Q, stands tall. An attempt here to win the Tag Team Championships kick out of two. And Q, of all the athletes in this matchup, the one that we haven't talked about yet. Perhaps the most important. Oh, what about oh, power slam. my goodness! Power slam out of the corner. Talk about burying the lead there, cover two, no! to talk about the mysterious Q trying to reinvent himself here and get back in the title picture and then Luke Hawks cut me off and said shut up Matt <laughs> I wish I could say that more not too happy about having his hand stomped on by Q a moment ago. Oh, oh my look at that up and over. Wow, you talk about altitude there. Mysterious Q may have gotten a nosebleed off that back body drop from one half of the tag team champions. Now here's a tag to Tempo, and look at that. Wow. Luke oh. Cox is on tonight. He is on tonight. Kick out at two. I wouldn't say that just yet, Luke Hawks. I mean, Terrell Tempo, former champion for a reason. Oh, that disc is clothesline, Matt. Now a big scoop and a slam. Tempo, high elevation. And the challengers looking for a big night here. Luke Hawk slips out the back door. The match continues, and here comes the F-16. Of course, mysterious Q. Wrestling Texas Championship. We saw in that fatal four way. And now, the veteran instincts of Luke Hawks. But Tempo, oh! Off the apron. Tempo and Q cannot win these tag team titles on the floor. Wait a minute, what is Q doing? Oh! oh. Mysterious Q! Crash lands! We do not! Control out here with the F-16. Oh, what a oh, my goodness. Oh, my Lord. And now PJ Hawks invites himself on the deck of the aircraft carrier, and all four athletes are down. Holy hell, Matt Topolsky, all right here in front of us at the announce table. Mysterious Q did a beautiful springboard to the outside. He's almost like lightning. You never know when it's going to strike the Hill Valley Clock Tower as Luke Hawks gets the franchise back in the ring. Oh, wait a minute. Q no. Cutter! Q Cutter! PJ Hawks looking to run interference here. He gets dumped unceremoniously to the outside. The challengers stand tall, but they can't take advantage. A disqualification won't win the titles. P.J. Hawks went up and over. Something's going on over there, man. Well, the challengers inside the ring. The official has gone to the outside. And it looks like P.J. Hawks may be seriously injured. It looks like his knee buckled under him. His leg just gave out completely when he got dumped over the top rope by Terrell Tempo. Wait a minute. Oh, hey guys, I want to see this. Well, this is a tag team title match here in our main event. And the challengers chomping at the bit. And the officials throwing this thing out, Brad. Oh man, hold on.
Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been informed that PJ Hawks can no longer continue. Therefore, this match is ruled as a no contest. Well, a bit of a controversial decision here as Terrell Tempo and I'm certain the Mysterious Q as well are saying, well, Luke Hawks can continue. This is a tag team matchup. But the official ruling is this is a no contest. So Hawks Aries are gonna walk out of here tonight. Still tag team champions, but meanwhile, the bigger story is the health and well-being of PJ Hawks. He took a nasty spill over the top rope, courtesy of Terrell Tempo. Certainly we wish PJ Hawks the very best. We may need to get some medical attention out here for him. Brad Gilmore, what did you see? Yeah, I, I went to go try to find out exactly what was happening. It looked like his knee may have buckled when he went up and over. I mean, we saw Tempo have it scouted, threw him over the top rope, and when he landed, you know, I mean, you, know, you can't fake gravity, as they say. The referees falling into this match. I mean, uh, obviously in a no contest, I'm sure you already alluded to it, the championships aren't gonna change hands. Well, certainly the challengers are frustrated, and I understand their frustration, but the health and well-being of all of our athletes here at the Reality of Wrestling will take precedent over everything else. We, we wish PJ Hawks the best, and we are certainly looking forward to a return match between these two, between these four, excuse me, in the near future. Well, the road to the rise to wrestling royalty continues to roll on, and we've got more action coming at you right here next week on the Reality of Wrestling. Warren Johnson will be in action against Jonathan Vega. We're gonna have Edge Stone in action against Abe Jackson. And of course, the television championship will be up for grabs next week. I wanna thank everybody for joining us here tonight on the reality of wrestling as PJ Hawks is being helped out of here and we wish him the best of luck and certainly a speedy recovery as an end to this tag team title matchup here tonight. You hate to see this happen.